Hey there, today we are taking a closer look at the new HP Victor 16 in 2023, which in this configuration comes with an Intel i5 13500H, an RTX 4050 with up to 120W, which is basically the full wattage for this GPU, a 512GB Gen 4 NVMe M.2 SSD with a reading speed of over 5GB per second and a writing speed of around 2.8. 8 GB per second. Fast 16 GB DDR5 a RAM with 5200 MHz, a 16 by 9 Full HD 144 Hz screen, a 83 Watt hour battery, Wi Fi 6, and a larger 230 Watt AC adapter, as you can see here. Unfortunately, there is no second M.2 slot, so in order to upgrade the disk space, you would have to switch the drive to a bigger one or use an external drive instead. In this configuration, the laptop actually starts at around $1,000 in the US right now and €1,350 Euros in Europe. It can be configured in a variety of versions with up to an RTX 4070 and an Intel i7, also with smaller 15-inch screens, as well as slower GPUs like the RTX 3050 with 6GB or even the RTX 2050. And prices can be very different where you live, but overall it's clearly one of the cheaper entry-level gaming laptops despite having some nice features. The HP Victor 16 is built inside a full plastic case, which uh, makes a really good overall impression compared to other laptops in this price category. And it's pretty good in avoiding fingerprints as well. But my unit actually made a screeching sound when moving the display lid, which is pretty annoying and kind of unsettling. And I don't know if it's just an issue of my review unit here. It cannot be opened with one hand, though it wakes up from sleep within one second, which is pretty nice. And when shut down, it actually completely boots within 12 seconds, which is impressive. P.S. The vast majority of viewers of my videos aren't actually subscribed to my channel, so well, you know what to do. The design is very subtle and slick with a stylish mirror coated V uh, in the middle of the top. And this version is having a, the dark bluish color. There are also gray blackish versions. And in some countries, there are even white versions as well. Uh, and here you can see a comparison of the 16 inch screen of the HP Victor 16 um, compared with the 15.7 inch screen of my Asus TUF A15. It weighs 2.3 kg and the SC adapter weighs an additional 760 g, resulting in a total of slightly over 3 kg. The Omen Gaming Hub offers three performance modes, Eco Balanced and Performance, and you can actually adjust the fan speed or use an automatic mode instead. The fans are pretty silent when using the Eco and the Balanced mode once the laptop is idling for a while. Using the performance mode causes the fans to turn up faster and more hearable. There is a fans always on switch in the BIOS, which if deactivated will cause the fans to stop spinning in some scenarios when the laptop is on idle or used very lightly. Surprisingly, it also has a MUX switch to turn off the integrated GPU and directly access the RTX 4050, which usually is rather uncommon in this price category. I've tested the benchmarks of Cyberpunk 2077 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider on ultra settings to compare the speed of the three performance modes and my advice would definitely be to use the balance mode for a much quieter experience without experiencing a noticeable performance loss. Gaming on battery is not possible when using the RTX 4050 as the power throttling is just way too hard. The temperatures after 10 minutes of playing Cyberpunk 2077 at an ambient temperature of around 23 degrees Celsius were as follows. Using a laptop stand dropped the temperatures by quite some degrees as you can see here. I have to say these temperatures are quite impressive considering the noise level is really acceptable in balanced mode. And using a laptop stand resulted in even better temperatures. If you don't have one, alternatively, you could just um, use a book or similar item to lift up the back of the laptop by a small amount. And the WASD keys, they stay perfectly cool while gaming. And while gaming, the laptop pulls around 180 watt from the wall according to my watt meter. The laptop has one vent at the left side, as well as a big vent at the back, a thin grid at the top above the keyboard, and a bigger grid at the bottom. Yes, this is what the integrated camera looks like and the integrated microphone sounds like. And it also has a privacy shutter. 
The display actually is, as expected, one of the laptop's weaker features. So it's a 16x9 Full HD 144Hz screen IPS without any adaptive sync technology. A weak maximum brightness of only 257 nits and disappointing color accuracy. I've measured it myself with a Spider X Pro. It's okay for inside use and if you're not sensitive to color accuracy though. The keyboard has one manually adjustable RGB zone, which you can configure in the Omen Gaming Hub. Keyboard flex is okay, and I was able to achieve a good writing speed. The build quality is okay as well. The big touchpad is a tiny bit too far to the left, and some people might accidentally touch it while gaming, so you might want to turn it off in that case. And it had a really satisfying clicking feel and sound. The needed clicking force is very low. The keyboard also offers an Omen key to quickly access the Omen Gaming Hub in which you can configure the performance modes. But unfortunately there is no quick access key to change performance modes other than that as far as I was able to find out. Connection wise we are getting a basic setup. On the left side we are only having a USB 3A port and a LAN port. No connections at the back. And on the right side there is an HDMI port, two more USB 3A ports and a USB-C port with display port support, but no Thunderbolt. The two downward facing Bang and Olufsen speakers are actually all right. Both sound quality and loudness are above average for a laptop of this price category. Of course, there's the common lack of bass, though I've actually seen worse. The 83 watt hour battery in the HP Victor 16 can provide okay runtimes. On idle with 20% brightness and Wi-Fi, I got a runtime of only around 7.5 hours Though watching YouTube, I still achieved 6.25 hours with 50% display brightness and headphones at 20% loudness and activated Wi-Fi. Um, in gaming, I was getting around 60 to 120 minutes depending on the performance mode, but gaming isn't really possible in demanding 3D games as the CPU is throttled way too hard for a smooth experience. In Cinebench R23, the HP Victus scored 14,420 points when using the performance mode in the first run and around 11,800 in the following run since the CPU is power throttling down to around 40 watt after around 30 seconds, which on the other hand keeps the temperatures very low even on the load. The single core score was around 1,674 points. On the balanced mode the score was still a respectable 14,100 points. The echo mode was only able to reach 8,459 points while in that mode the CPU is using around 25 watt only and the laptop stays very quiet even under full load. The same performance also applies when the Victus is unplugged. In PC Mark 10 I saw 6567 points when using the performance mode, 6480 on balanced mode, 4524 uh, on the eco mode and 4491 on battery. I was testing Hogwarts Legacy on high settings and DLSS quality at 1080p which resulted in around 62 FPS on average with a pretty bad 1% low of around 15 caused by the well-known stuttering that can occur in this game. Though as you can see most of the time the VRAM seems to be sufficient. Of course you could also use frame generation to get more FPS instead and smoothen the frame times a bit at the same time. And to be honest, if I was using an RTX 4050, I would actually activate it. And of course, you could tinker around with the settings a bit to get more FPS and a low VRAM usage or cap the FPS at 60. In The Last of Us, I was testing medium settings with DLSS on quality at 1080p and saw an average of around 85 FPS with a 1% low of 54, which is perfectly playable. The latest patches really helped massively speeding up the shader caching and level loading times. I didn't experience one single frame drop or stutter through my whole testing period. Though medium settings surely helped to avoid the well-known VRAM issues in this game. In CSGO I was using high settings and saw a very high average FPS of 314 any 1% low of 124 which if you've watched some of my videos before um, know that this isn't a problem since you can't feel the relatively low 1% low FPS in this title. It's working perfectly fine and is definitely enough to play the game on a professional level in my opinion. In God of War I was using the high preset with DLSS and quality once more and saw an average FPS of around 94 FPS with a 1% low of 58. Perfectly playable, beautiful game, 
and absolutely no complaints here. You could even get a stable 60 FPS without DLSS if you don't like upscaling technologies, though I really think that on a laptop screen you can't really tell the difference at all if you're not comparing screenshots. The overall gaming performance is more or less identical to other RTX 4050 laptops, though the fact that this RTX 4050 is using the maximum wattage and that it is combined with a fast i5 with good single core speeds surely places it at the top of similar laptops. Overall, the Victor 16 can play any existing game out there with pretty high FPS if you're not running into VRAM trouble since the 6GB are becoming a big problem on higher settings in more and more AAA games. Though all eSport titles are perfectly playable on high to ultra settings as of now. While we're at it, I highly recommend checking out my RTX 4050 video over here if you haven't already done that and also the video in which I talk about the wattage issue of the RTX 4000 series. By the way, these are the 3 d Mark results I achieved on the HP Victus 16. And I also have to point out that in some gaming sessions I had severe stuttering that occurred every other second. It just looked like a heartbeat actually if you look at the frame time graph. Restarting the game would usually solve this problem instantly, but I heard that other reviewers also had this problem, so I hope that HP is going to fix this issue as I already had the newest drivers and BIOS installed. But overall the laptop is pretty good compared to most other gaming laptops in this lower price segment. Its biggest flaws probably are the mediocre screen, the screeching hinge and the missing upgrade option for a second M.2 SSD. Other than that, I couldn't find any major flaws on my tested unit. Of course, I cannot predict a long time usage, but I would definitely recommend this laptop for around $1,000. Features like a MUX switch, completely adjustable fans, a really good build quality and decent speakers are usually only seen in higher priced models. I also really like that the balance mode noise level was pretty low while still providing almost full gaming performance. Oh and PS, while recording I forgot to mention that this laptop is of course perfectly fine for 4K video editing or using Blender to some extent as well. And if you're into subtle designs, you can't really go wrong with the HP Victor 16 in 2023. Alright, that's all for today. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing and hit that like button. That helps a lot. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and cheers. Thank you.